waters. So now the Strait of Hormuz, where a fifth of the world's oil passes, has become the focus once again of a standoff between Iran and the U.S. Therefore, a U.S.-led maritime coalition aimed at protecting international shipping near the Strait of Hormuz followed alleged Iranian attacks on oil tankers there. Iran, the world's largest state sponsor of terror, has demonstrated its willingness to pull commercial vessels from the sea. Uh, and we just think uh, that's wrong and needs to be protected against. And the best way to do that is deterrence, uh, to create stability. So what we've asked 60-plus uh, nations to do is provide assistance in securing the Strait of Hormuz so that commercial vessels can travel through there. The UAE, Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, along with the United Kingdom and Australia all joined in the effort. But most European governments declined to participate in the naval coalition, fearful of undermining their efforts to save a landmark 2050 nuclear accord with Iran, which was badly weakened by Washington's withdrawal last year. Now, while many feared a war might become a reality between the Islamic Republic and the U.S., Iranian President Hassan Rouhani promised that a war with Iran is the mother of all wars, while warning that shipping might not be safe in the Strait of Hormuz oil waterway. If U.S. and its allies want security, if your soldiers want security in this region, that there should be security for security. You cannot damage our security and expect to have your own security in return. You want peace for peace, oil for oil. But while a military strike or diplomacy might be the answer, this has led to the insecurity of the Persian Gulf. All right, Shalom. This is Ahara Wan by Nyasha Allah of the Lions Den Camp. I want to say Kaal Halayim, La Yahawah, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Harakakwadash, Ma'amah. The belonging to the elder apostles of GMS and the elders. Shalom to you, Akim and Akwatim and children that believe in sincerity and truth around the four corners of the earth. This is 2nd Ezra 15 and 1. Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, which I will put in thy mouth, say if Yahweh, and cause them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true. All right, and the reason I want to start with this scripture is because um, the prophecies, man, the prophecies are coming to pass. All right, the spirit of Yahweh Shai, the spirit of prophecy, and um, pro, uh, pro comes from what the word pre meaning before, and facade means to say to say. Now, um, to say before it happens, according to the scriptures, according to the spirit of truth, all right, according to what is written. Now, that's the point. Everything is happening according to what is written that was spoken beforehand. And um, seeing these prophecies happen, seeing wars and rumors of wars. This is Matthew 24 and 6. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. And that's what we're hearing. All right? That region is coming a hotbed for um, a, a military escalation. All right, the Persian Gulf, or what you would call the um, Strait of Hormuz, which is a um a shipment area that really belongs to the Persians. All right, it's called the Persian Gulf, and the Iranians they changed their name from Persia to Iran around the nineteen um fifties, if if I remember correctly. All right, and originally they were called the Persians, and they they later changed their name to. The Iranians, meaning the nobles or rich ones. All right. So um, that area, they're still the Persians. And that's what they're fighting over that, that land. That, I mean, that um, strait for. All right. And the access to that um, the shipment lines. Um, over there, you have a lot of the OPEC nations, the oil producing, the um, uh, oil and petroleum exporting uh, countries. All right, you have the deal that America made with Saudi Arabia around 1973 for all the nations in the world if they want to buy oil uh, from Saudi Arabia. The, the, you know, the oil fields, they would have to what? Uh, um, use the dollar to buy it. And that's what made the dollar the world currency. And around 1991, you had something called uh, the Baghdad and Kuwait. All right, the Operation Desert Storm. To where Bush uh, sent troops over there to Saudi Arabia and, and, and talked about uh, 
protecting the oil fields when later the oil fields were destroyed. All right. So <clears throat> and they enlarged their desires as hell. So America being over there, it shows that their demonocracy, right? Um, and, uh, you know, and their oppression is starting to be um, exposed. All right. People can see it that, uh, um, you know, that America's playing both sides. All right. And causing all this um, confusion. Because America's Babylon, the place of confusion. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet, right? It's prophecy. But that let us know what times we're in. All right. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. And we're hearing about the famines and the threat of famine here in America and over there in Iran because the economy is failing uh, due to um, American sanctions on their country, which is putting a hell on the Iranian people or their citizens. Um and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. And there have been earthquakes all over the world. All right. But uh, them having a military conflict over there in the Strait of Hormuz is all prophecy building up to the war of Armageddon, ultimately ending in World War Three. All right. Revelations 11 and 14. The second woe is past and behold, the third woe cometh quickly. All right. So the second world war, world war which ended around 1945, um, uh, once America um, bombed Hiroshima and Nagasaki, all right? Um, uh, uh, ever since then, America's been moving into what you call the Middle East, all right? And they've been in, in Russia and China, they've been moving in to the Middle East and separating those areas unto themselves, like Syria is with Russia, all right? And so on and so on. Um, and now they've been playing chess with each other. And just a side note, the chess was created by the Persians. All right, the game of chess, they, they created by the Persians. And poker, wild, wild west poker, we have um, uh, your poker face, you know, like a joker. You, you have a mask on. That that was started with uh, America, All right, Esau. So you can see the game that they're playing. Ch uh, Persia is playing tit for tat. You move, then they move. That's why he said oil for oil. Right, economy for economy, whatever, whatever. So they're playing chess. This is Second Ezra 9. Um, actually, I'm start with this one. All right. Now, this is one of the prophecies, man, to let you know what times we're in. All right. Um. It happened five. It happened in five uh, around five eighty six, you know, from six oh six to five eighty six. But um, ultimately, it's going to happen again. All right, this is a prophecy in Joel, spoken speaking of today. All right, because uh, things that are written for time were written for our learning and to set up and establish the spirit of written prophecy. All right, so Joel two and twenty. But I will re remove far off from you the northern army. And the northern army represents the American army. All right. And they've been removed and spread out so thin all around the four corners of the earth, fighting battles on so many fronts. They have the most military bases around the world than any other country. I right, show you, shows you that they have their hand in everything, order out of chaos, cause the chaos, bring in more control. Cause the chaos in the Strait of Hormuz, bring in more cameras, bring in more control, more military, more uh, backup from these countries. All right, but all these countries, they're, they're siding with Iran. They don't want to break their deals with Iran because Iran is more valuable. All right, that's why the scriptures say, let the weak say they're strong. And that's what um, Persia, Syria, Turkey, Venezuela, all, right, all these proxy nations—they've been—they've becoming 
uh, sovereign established nations, man, able to hold their own moving to a different currency other than the dollar. So where they won't be uh, damaged by any sanctions tied to the dollar. All right. Sanctions is a form of war. So they're basically going to war right now. It's just no missiles are flying. No bullets are being shot. It's an economic and a shipment of a war. A war on each other's infrastructure. Um, anyway, so what it, it said, but I will remove far off from you the northern army. And it says, and will drive him into a land barren and desolate. And that land that's barren and desolate is uh, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, all right? What you call Baghdad, all those areas, with his face toward the East Sea, and the East Sea represents the um, the Caspian Sea. And I'm gonna get that. I'm gonna show you in a second. All right, because the Caspian Sea and the Black Sea they used to be connected, but the Lord had them split. So He's saying the East Sea, which would be towards the right, which would be the Caspian Sea, and His hinder part towards the utmost sea. All right, the utmost sea represents the Red Sea. All right, so he's going to be facing towards Iran. And his stink shall come up and his ill savor shall come up because he have done great things. Fear not, O land. Be glad and rejoice for Yahweh will do great things. All right, you see here all the military bases that America has on the borders of Iran. And it looks the same way around Russia. So that lets you know that ultimate goal, all right, is to is to go after Iran and go after Russia. But that's going to be the end of America, according to prophecy, according to thus saith Yahweh, all right. So they're aiming. They got all these areas they're up in Turkey. Now you have Turkey threatening to shut down one of the military bases over here, America's military bases, due to the sanctions that America's been putting on Turkey. All right. So we're all they got all these bases. You see that? And they they're fighting over something that belongs to this nation here. And a fifth of the world's shipments come through that area, through that strait right here. This is a strait. Strait of Hormuz. Let me get this real quick. All right, see right here, you have Iran. And all those areas I was telling you, showing you just now, Kuwait, Bahrain, Qatar, you've been hearing about all these here in America because America has their foot, their foot troops in these areas. All right. See that? Um, I'm going to get one more scripture. This is Habakkuk 2. And um, I'm going to start from three. Start from three. It says, for the vision, see the prophecy, because back then they used to call prophets uh, seers, all right? Same thing. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. All right, so once it's happening, it's going to happen, man. Are right, we in the spirit of waiting, the spirit of patience right now. And watching, waiting, watching, and patience and edification. Behold, his soul which is lifted up and is not right upright in him, but the just shall live by faith. All right, Esau and two and these heathens, their spirit, even I ran, their spirit is not lifted up righteously in them. Everything they lifted up for is through what? Idolatry, their pride, their weaponry, their riches, which buys more weapons. All right, with Iran and America. So everything they're lifted up for is not righteous. But the righteous are going to be living in these times by faith. All right. Um, yea, also because he transgresseth by wine, through his philosophies, through his lies and deception, he is a proud man. So Esau has become that proud man because they've, tra they've um, transgressed, continually sinned. All right, and they think they're getting away with it. Neither keep it at home. See that they don't keep at home; they go out and they hunt around the world, 
seeking whom they may devour. Just like Iran, now they want to devour that area. Anywhere they put their intentions, they bring hell and destruction. Who enlarge of his desire as hell. So anywhere they go, they, 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 they uh, desire uh, to bring that demonocracy, they bring hell. And it is as death, man, destruction and sin. And cannot be satisfied, but gathereth unto him all nations and heapeth unto him all people. And that's prophecy. So not all these, I mean, all those nations, including Iran, Syria, Russia, China, all prophesied in the scriptures. Um, I think it's Ezekiel 38, right, to go against America in, in the war of Armageddon over there in the Middle East and, and bringing it over here to America with their missiles. It says, and um, shall not all these take up a parable against him and a taunting proverb against him and say, Woe to him that increaseth that which is not his. How long? And to him that ladeth himself with thick clay. All right, so America has their hands in everybody else's business, putting sanctions on everybody, you know, keeping everybody's economy and their market uh, uh, low, which is making America look like they're lifted up while they got their foot on everybody's neck including the children of Israel neck. So what did that mean? Um, thick clay, meaning what? Debt. America has over $22 trillion of debt that's unaccounted for. And that's what's going to collapse the economy of America because it can't be paid. The banks can't pay each other. They have to have private investors step in, like the, um, the Rothschild, the elite. They, the feds, they step in and pay the debt for the banks in America to, amongst each other, what they call a repo market, right? Paying off that debt. But America is done, man. Uh, so um, what they're doing is they're becoming a cancer now. All right, what happened when you're in the water with somebody and they, they begin to drown, they begin to panic. And if that person is not a honorable person, they're going to pull you under. All right, so they, they use you for the damn float or boat verse 7 shall they not suddenly rise shall they not rise up suddenly that shall bite thee and awake that shall vex thee and thou shall be for booties unto them because thou hast spoiled many nations all the remnant of the people shall spoil thee because of men's blood see that the scripture said woe unto them that build a town with, with uh, blood all right, the bloody city, America, for the violence of the land of the city and of all that dwell therein. All right. Uh, woe to him that coveteth an evil covetousness to his house, that he may set his nest on high, that he may be delivered from the power of evil. So if a person stand on another person's neck so they can look taller or, be, or uh, drown you to be safe from the flood, that's wicked. And that's what America is doing, all right? Attacking these nations, putting sanctions on them, robbing, stealing, and killing. All right, that's why he said, "What? I will remove far off from you the northern army." That's America, man, and will drive him into a land barren and desolate. All right, let me get that. Speak on that a little bit more. With his face towards the east sea and his hinder part towards the utmost sea. All right, so right here, and you see right here it says what? Uh, Sixty degrees east, forty-five degrees east, so around fifty average east. You have what? The Caspian Sea. All right, that's why it says the East Sea. And the funny thing is, these two. The Black Sea, the Caspian Sea, and the uh, Aral Sea, they used to all be connected. All right. But the Lord made it so where he divided it up and it go along according with prophecy. And that East Sea is talking about the Caspian Sea. All right. And uh, right here, he says, what is hinder part towards the utmost sea? And the utmost represents what? Africa. I mean, damn. The Red Sea. 
All right, the Red Sea. So the Lord said he's going to drive them into a land, the northern army into a land, barren and desolate. So the Lord controls the minds of these heathens, and he, he has driven America's army into the Middle East to bring about their own demise. All right. Um, so they're all over here in this area facing toward what? This way. Right here toward the Caspian Sea. Look at that. So from here going this way towards Iran. All right. So that's what they're after. Ultimately to, to go towards Russia. See that? So the Lord driving them in this direction. In China. All right. So it's all prophecy, man. Them building up in that area. All right. So uh, this is more prophecy building up. And they are going to go to war at some point over that area. You know, you heard, you heard the Iranian uh, leader saying that they will go to war in that area, meaning tit for tat. You know, they attack oil tankers. They can set up mines in the damn water. They can do all kinds of shit over there, man, because that's their waters. So they're going to have drone strikes, all kind of different weird, weird technological wars, man, that we couldn't even imagine. All right. Now, these times we in, man, what the Lord says is going to be worse than any time upon the earth. All right. This is one of my favorite scriptures. Second Ezra 9 and 1. He answered me then and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself. And when thou seest part of the signs past, which I have told thee before. All right. So we measure the time according to the scriptures and the prophecies diligently in the age that we're in itself, right? And the times that we're in. Then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. There shall, therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world. All right, that goes along with the scripture I read earlier in Matthews. All right, the rumors of wars. Then shalt thou under, well understand that the Most High spake of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. For like as the that for like all that is for like as all that is made in the world hath the beginning and an end right nothing new under the sun all these nations and kingdoms they rise they fall but man man animal and nature's life meaning the trees and the grass it all rises and falls lives and dies right um it says what for like, as all that is made in the world has a beginning, meaning creation, and an end. And the end is manifest. All right? So the end has to be what established. Uh, the same way the Lord steps in and intervenes and creates you, or created America, he, he steps in and intervenes to bring about the prophecies of his end. And that's what you're seeing. When we see... Uh, Wars, rumors of wars, escalations in the Middle East, America's um, sanctions and all this stuff going on with America. Uh, you know, time we in the Lord stepping in, beginning to visit the world, sending his angels to bring about the prophecies. All right. It says, even so, the times of the highest have plain, plain beginnings and wonder and powerful works and endings and signs and effects. And everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith. That's why I said the just shall live by faith, where, whereby ye have believed, shall be preserved from the said perils from World War Three, from Armageddon. The Lord going to preserve you and keep you and shall see my salvation in my land and within my borders. For I have sanctified them for me from the beginning. So you'll be delivered and carried over there to Jerusalem. All right. And you'll be called New Jerusalem. You know, so us seeing all that stuff happen in the East. 
it's a, it's a sure sign that Yahweh Shah is about to show up. And he's about to bring about um, his end time prophecies. 